All right, welcome to Family Bible Time, and we are with Stephanie and all the Band Simba children. Hooray! And they watch. They watch from home when they're normally on the other. They're normally on your side of the camera, and today they're on our side of the camera. And so that means tomorrow you'll be on the other side of the camera. And, on, and you'll be here. Okay, we'll work it out. How exciting. We're in family Bible time, which means that we're going to have a lot of fun. And we're going to be reading Job chapter 12. Job chapter 12, where you're going to learn about... Job, that's right, Job. You're going to learn about how Job felt about his friends being so nasty to him. You've been following, haven't you? His, his friends, you were telling me earlier, Eliphaz was really cruel, wasn't he? Yeah, and, and not only Eliphaz, but Bildad, the, what was Bildad, the sh shoe height? And now we've had um, Zophar, the Naamathite. I was going to say You were going to say that. Well, go on then, say it loudly. Zophar, Zoph the Naamathite, all right. And now we're going to have Job speak again in chapter 12. And then we're going to be in Romans chapter 16. We're finishing Romans. Oh, what a shame. Never mind. Let's turn... Oh, no, let's not turn that over. Let's, let's go and let's pray, shall we? Ready? Lord, thank you for your word and thank you for this privilege to visit uh, rugby and to be with the believers here today and the privilege of being here with Stephanie and the Ben Simba children in their home and we praise you for what you're doing through your word and we praise you that you're helping us and we praise you that you're teaching us and we praise you that you are leading us and we pray that you would lead us in the truth we pray even now in Jesus name help us to understand it Amen. amen. I got you to say amen twice, didn't I? Yeah. All right, there we go. Job chapter 12. Then Job answered and said, you, always need, you all need to be following along with your fingers as best you can. Now Job answered and said, No doubt you are the people and wisdom will die with you. Uh -huh. Wow, do you think Job's being a bit funny? Yes, no. Job's being... It's Job's being what's called sarcastic, mm -hmm. and that means Job's he's he's saying, huh, well, no doubt you he's not saying, oh, no doubt you are the you, you are the people and wisdom will die with you. He doesn't really believe that. Mm -hmm. He's saying it by way of kind of complaint. Well, no doubt you're the wis you're you're the people and wisdom's going to die with you. Right? You, you think you're so clever, you lot. No. But I have understanding as well as you. That's Job, how he's feeling. Mm. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know such things as these? I am a laughing stock to my friends. I, who called to God and he answered me, a just and blameless man, am a laughing stock. Now, do you like it when people laugh at you? No. No, you don't, do you? Think about poor Job. What had happened to him? He'd lost everything and now people were laughing. Why do people laugh at you when thing, nasty things happen to you? Um, they laugh at you because um, you have um, stuff they don't have. Maybe, but maybe... What do you think? Why do people laugh at you when, when nasty things happen to you? That's really cruel, isn't it? It doesn't make sense. Because he's poor. Because he's poor now. Yeah, they're laughing because he's poor now. They're saying, oh, look at Job. He had everything. Now he's lost everything. Why would you laugh at that? That's really cruel, isn't it? That's really cruel. But they did. Verse 5. In the thought of one who is at ease, there is contempt for misfortune. It is ready for those whose feet slip. The tents of robbers are at peace, and those who provoke God are secure, who bring their God in their hand. Those idol worshippers who can actually hold their God in their hand. 
But ask the beasts, and they will teach you, the birds of the heavens, and they will tell you, or the bushes of the earth, and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare to you, who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. Does not the ear test words as the palate tastes food? Wisdom is with the aged and understanding in length of days. With God are wisdom and might. He has counsel and understanding. If he tears down, none can rebuild. If he shuts a man in, none can open. If he withholds the waters, they dry up. If he sends them out, they overwhelm the land. With him must strength and sound wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He leads counsellors away stripped, and judges he makes fools. He looses the bonds of kings and binds a waistcloth on their hips, like makes them into servants. He leads priests away stripped and overthrows the mighty. He deprives of speech those who are trusted and takes away the discernment of the elders. He pours contempt on princes and loosens the belt of the strong. Good following. He uncovers the deeps out of darkness and brings deep darkness to light. He makes nations great and he destroys them he enlarges nations and leads them away he takes away understanding from the chiefs of the people of the earth and makes them wander in a pathless waste they grope in the dark without light he makes them stagger like a drunken man Ooh, don't move don't don't change yeah i want you to look at something Oh, what's Job saying? You are allowed to move, but just don't change to Romans just yet. What is Job saying? What's his point? Oh, go on, Azariah. Um, he's replying to Job's question about telling Zophar and his other friends. Yeah, he's telling Zophar and his other friends. That's brilliant. Well done. He's telling them that they're wrong, isn't he? Yeah. What do you think? Is he telling them, look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Who among these, and he's talking about the animals and the bushes and the fish, who among these does not know, what's the next line? Let's all say it. That the hand of the Lord has done this. Okay, the hand of the Lord has done what? Job's talking about his own sufferings. Hang on a minute. Didn't the devil do it? Yeah, we didn't. We know that from the beginning. Don't you remember? But who gave the devil permission? God. Do you think the same? Yeah. And you agree? Yeah. And what about you? You're all right. You're all right. So it was God. Who allowed it? Why did God allow suffering? Oh, (laughs) hold on a minute. Before you try and answer, that's a difficult one, isn't it? That's a big difficult question, isn't it? Because we don't actually know, we don't get the answers to everything, do we? Karis? Could it be to test Job? Well, it could be to test Job, because in, in the Bible we do learn that sometimes God allows suffering to test us, doesn't it? Sometimes God allows suffering to make, give us something called steadfastness. What's steadfastness? It's like steady, but really steady. Rock steady. I've never had sufferings. You've never had sufferings? Mm-hmm. Well, if you wait long enough, you will. It happens. In fact, you have, but you're just maybe not thinking of them in that way. So sometimes, sometimes, look, we don't know all the reasons God allows sufferings, but look, one thing you can learn, which is really good here, 
Job is suffering, isn't he? Job is suffering terribly, and his friends are saying, it's because you've sinned. Well, actually, it's not because Job sinned. We know that from this book. And, and it's not fair of them to say that. But Job is saying, look, I don't know why it is, but I know that it's God who's done it. Mm. And if God's done it, we can't change it. It's not, if, God, if God causes me to suffer, I can't fix that. And if God blesses me, well, no one can stop him. And so God, he's just saying really strongly, look, God is in charge. You guys, you guys are wrong, but God, I believe God is in charge. And that's right, isn't it? That's right, because even though Job was struggling with it, Job wasn't forgetting that who was in charge, and that's good. Okay, so it's a simple lesson. Job was a faithful man. Job was a faithful man, wasn't he? Even in his terrible sufferings, he didn't, he didn't accuse God of doing wrong. Well, that's right. Is that what you were going to say? He didn't curse God. He didn't curse God. That was so cool, wasn't that? That was like superhero suffering. <laughs> I know someone else who's been through superhero suffering and didn't curse God. I think you're related to her. Yes. <laughs> mummy. Yeah. Your mummy. Your mummy. That's right. Yeah. And and see how God looks after people sometimes through terrible sufferings. Isn't that wonderful? God is good all the time. All right. Let's go to Romans chapter 16. Where's Romans? Is that in the Old Testament? No. Is it, is it before the Gospels? Yes. Who wrote the book of Romans? Oh, Azariah, your hand was up first. Paul. Paul. Oh, you're a first class student. I'll give, I'll give 10 points to the person who can tell me where the Romans lived. Go on. In Rome. In Rome. Brilliant. Ten points. Okay, now we're coming to the last chapter of Romans, chapter 16. Okay, you ready for this? I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church in Centria. Now, that's a very interesting sentence because that word servant... Centria is the name of the place. It's Corinth. But now listen, um, Phoebe was a servant of the church, and that word servant is the word, same word as we've got for deacon. And so some people, and I'm one of them, think that Phoebe was probably a deaconess. I mean, she was a lady who, who was a... Oh servant in the church. A, a deacon is a servant and a servant, um, a deacon is someone who serves the people in the church. Now there's a deaconess sitting at this table. Do you know what her name is? Donna. Donna, yes. <laughs> Auntie Donna is a deaconess of the church in London. Anyway, verse 2. So why did he commend her? that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints. That's another reason I think that she was a deaconess, because that's the kind of language that you get in John's letters when he says, you know, send them on their way in a manner worthy of the Lord. And now he's saying, this lady's a real servant of the church. You welcome her in a way worthy of the saints. In other words, You've got to really look after her because she's a great servant of God. And help her in whatever she may need from you. In other words, she's on a mission. Deaconess on a mission. That sounds fun, doesn't it? For she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. What's a patron? It's got nothing to do with 
patronising. <laughs> Do you know what a patron is? I would give you 20 points if you knew what a patron was. No. A patron is someone who provides for the needs of others. So sometimes it's like if you were really rich, you would take care of other people's needs, and that's what she did. Huh. Anyway, that was Phoebe in verses 1 and 2. Now look at verse 3. We're going to meet someone else, some more people. Greet Prisca and Aquila. Who's Prisca? She's otherwise known as... Go on, Azariah. A deaconess. Oh, she's not a deaconess, no. Go on. Priscilla. Priscilla. Well done. Priscilla was her, the other version of her name. Priscilla and Aquila. Prisca and Aquila. My fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life. Ooh, what do you think that was? Why don't you all write a story about the day when Prisca and Aquila risked their necks for Paul's life. Does it mean that they were beheaded for his life? Well, no, it means that they risked their life. So they it's saved like him? like another way... Of, oh, they must have done. They must have saved him, but we don't know the story. Wouldn't it be exciting to know that story? Yeah. Why don't you have a go at writing it? All of it. Just, uh, but just don't try to put it in the Bible, because <laughs> you can't make it up and put it in the Bible, can you? Verse 4. Who risked their lives, lives next for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Verse 5. Greet also the church in their house. So sometimes the churches were, were, were like a house church and, and met in somebody's house. You have a, like the you, you have a prayer house. meeting in your house, don't you? Exactly. Greet my beloved Epinetus. Epinetus, Epinetus, whatever his name was, <laughs> who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Imagine being the first ever Christian, not in a country, but in a whole region like Asia. Wow. Yeah, th this Asia was a bit different from the modern Asia, but it, it's still a big area. Yeah. Greet Mary, verse 6, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. Now, they are well known to the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fella, fellow worker in Christ. He had quite a boring life. Um, I'm joking. He wasn't, it didn't really have a boring life, but just a boring name. It was a little bit urbane. Um, and my beloved Stachys. He stacked up. He stacked things up, yeah. Who, who, who was it? You don't, you know now know who piled up all the chairs in Paul's <laughs> church. Uh, it was Stachys. Oh, because I get it, because he stacked. He stacked the that chairs, that stacks the chairs, exactly. <laughs> all right. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Flowery guy. <laughs> Greet those who work those workers in the Lord, Tryphena and Tryphosa. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Are they twins? <laughs> Probably. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. Also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Mm. Greet Asyncritus. He could never play the drums. <laughs> Phlegon, <laughs> who couldn't get rid of his cough. <laughs> Hermes, who is always flying about all over the place. Patrobas, Hermes. 
and the brothers who are with them. Oh dear. All right, back to, back to sense, please. Verse 15. Greet Philologus. He loved the word. Philo means to love or be a friend of, and logus would be the word. So anyway, Julia, Nereus, or Nerus rather, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them, greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. Now, stop for a moment. Before we go on, let's just think about this. Imagine you were in the church in Rome and someone was standing up and reading the, this letter. And imagine in that list it said, Greet Azariah. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, The Lord remembers me and what I do for him. Mm. Oh, now wouldn't you love mm. to know that the Lord is watching? And thinking about you and thinking about, now, are you really his servant? If you are his servant, if you love him and you become his servant, he notices. He doesn't forget. Even Paul didn't forget. And he wrote and he, he greeted them all. And think about that. Paul, some people are really busy. Sometimes when I get really busy, I forget even people's names. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible but it's really but Paul was very very Paul was uh, uh, Paul was very very careful and he never got people's names <laughs> so listen this is really really something isn't it because this is in the Bible and God cares enough about what all these people did to put it in the Bible so that we can know all these years later, wow, God really cares about these people and he really cares about us. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Right, verse 17. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions. Now, just before you get... Any questions in your minds? This is not talking about long division or short division. <laughs> this is not talking about maths. maths. It's talking about the church. What's a division in the church? Oh, it's worse than maths. It's worse than anything you can imagine, really. Yeah. Sacrifice? No, it's not a sacrifice. A division. In, do you know what a division in the church is? Splitting. Oh, it's when someone splits the church. Did he get there before? Did you know as well? Yeah, okay. Now, the thing is that sometimes there are people in churches who are not even afraid to cause a split. And yet, Jesus, what did Jesus pray for in the church? That we all might be, how many? One. One. We all might be, have unity. And yet there are some people who just, they're not even afraid to try and say, oh, you come and be part of my group. And those nasty people over there, they can be in a different group. No. That's really bad, isn't it? <coughs> Why is that so bad? Well, because in a church, go on. Church, they, they, um, they have to um, be cooperative with each other. Cooperative with each other. Yes, a very good description. Because they should love one another. That's what Jesus said, isn't it? And they should submit to their leaders. Shouldn't try to split things away from their leaders. The Bible says don't do that. Now, what does the Bible say here? Verse 17, look at it again. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. In other words, if people are trying to teach things which are not what the Bible really teaches, 
And what does it say next? What are those last two words in verse 17? Yes. Avoid them. Avoid them. Hmm. Does that mean go round their house and have a good old gossip? Is there such a thing as a good old gossip? Oh, that's a bad thing, isn't it? Yeah? Stop them from arguing. Do you just avoid them? What does it mean to avoid them? Go on. So like you stay away from stay them. Stay away from them. All right, so if someone's trying to cause a split, if someone's trying to cause division and troubles and different doctrine, mm. stay away from them. That's what it says. Mm. Verse 18 you have to hold that now. Remember I told you sometimes you'd have to wait. For such persons do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember this. But their own appetites. Who are they doing it for? They're doing it for themselves. And listen, this is now we know how they do it. Look at the next bit. This tells you how they do it. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the, what's that word? Naive. Good. You were going to read that, weren't you? Very good. You're a good reader. Okay. Smooth talk. What's smooth talk? Um, when you um, don't gossip. No. Well, that's not what it is. Smooth talk is... You're speaking smoothly, very good. It's a go on, Karis. Flattery. Well, flat smooth talk and flattery. So flattery is like when you come and you say, Oh, you're so clever, all of you, and you're amazing, and nobody else in the church seems to understand this. And and smooth talk will be when people come in and they, they've just got a way of saying it that just makes it sound so lovely. But who do they deceive? They deceive the hearts of the naive. naive. What's naive? That means when you're, let me tell you, I'll, I'll define it for you. Being naive means when you don't think properly, when you don't think this person might be deceiving me, and you're just a little bit foolish, and you just get taken in by it. Because you don't think carefully, and you don't think Hmm, I wonder if this person could be actually leading me astray. Now you've probably heard about boys and girls and, uh, who get into trouble because someone might come up, up to them on the street and say, Ah, hello little girl. Hmm, I've got some sweets over here. Would you like to come into my car? and s have some sweets, what would you do? No. You'd say, no, I'm not going with you. Why? Because you know that they might be lying to you. They might be pretending to be nice, and they're going to be horrible to you, and so you don't go with them. Because only someone who was naive would go with them, because you might say, oh, really? Oh, that's nice. Let me go with you. And you'll be, everyone else is going, no, don't go with them. It's a bad guy. Okay, well, it's a bit like that here. Sometimes there are people, in, even in churches, who want to speak like, oh, well, you know, the, you know the, the pastors haven't really understood this right. Now, let me tell you how to interpret the Bible all differently. And there'd be some people, and instead of going, <gasps> this guy sounds like a divisive person, instead of doing that, they go, oh, really? Sweeties. <laughs> and they go with them. And that's someone who causes divisions like this, and smooth talk and flattery. They often flatter you. They tell you nice things about you. And, but they deceive the hearts of the naive. So don't be naive. Don't be naive. Don't be the person who's fooled by sweeties or by smooth talk and flattery. Okay? Verse 19. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. 
Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you, so do Lucius and Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsman. I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. Hold on a minute. I thought you said it was Paul that wrote Romans. <laughs> it says Tertius. How can it be? Hang on a minute. You were right. Yeah, because Tertius wrote this letter, not T the book. Oh, that's very clever, but it's not right. So, he's very, very clever, though. So, Paul dictated the letter. This is a letter, the letter of Romans. He dictated it to Tertius. So, Paul probably walked up and down saying, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, and so on, at, like at the beginning. And then he got to the end, and he finished... And Tertius says, hang on, can I add my own greeting, please? I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. Because Tertius was sitting there writing it all down whilst Paul talked it out. That's called dictation. It's cool, isn't it? Gaius, verse 23, who is host to me, sent and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Quartus greets you. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but has now been disclosed and made and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of, the, of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ Amen. You're a good reader, aren't you? Okay. Now, let's finish with this wonderful thought. Look at verse 25. Now, to him who is able to... What does it say? Strengthen. Strengthen. Does that mean that when you're feeling very weak, does that mean that when you're feeling very weak, God can make you strong? Is that what it means? That's actually true. But is it just talking about when you're feeling like physically weak, like you can't lift up your arms properly? Or is it maybe talking about when you're feeling weak spiritually, like when you're feeling like you might fall into temptation? Mm. When you're not feeling very strong, you're feeling maybe very sad mm. and not very happy. And maybe you're wondering... Am I going to be able to make it? Am I going to be able to be a Christian? Mm -hmm. Who can help you? It's very good, isn't it? Is he able to? He is able to strengthen you. So let's say one day, I can't imagine this in your house, because I reckon your, your mum's like, is she always strong? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Let's say one day, imagine this that your mum woke up and she wasn't feeling very strong. Today. So, <laughs> what would you do? Um, you can't strengthen her, can you? But who can? The Lord. The Lord can strengthen So what are you going to do for her? Make her breakfast. Oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. But what, are you, what can you do even better than make breakfast? Pray. Pray. Mm -hmm. <gasps> You could pray for your own, you could pray for each other, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. You could pray for us, that the Lord would strengthen us. That would be really cool. I'd like that. Would you pray for me? Yeah. Wow, yeah, thank do. you. Would you pray for Auntie Donna? Yeah. Would you pray for Caris? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you could pray, 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 because he is able to strengthen you. All right? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your word, which is just what we need. And we pray that you would strengthen us and that you would help us and that you would be with us. And we pray for Stephanie and for these lovely children and ask you that you would be with them and bless this household. And that you would, Lord, strengthen them to walk according to the Spirit. Lord, strengthen Stephanie 
and all that she has to do, bless her and help her, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're done. I need a camera queen. Can <laughs> Oh, I think I need a, I think I need a camera queen. You you would be a camera king, need a camera, because you're going to want to be here to wave goodbye to yourself. Because tomorrow you're going to be watching yourself wave. Bye. So, let's say goodbye. goodbye. See you tomorrow. Bye.